Hi, Elaine K. Christian here. Uh, did you know that Grandparents Day is September 12th? Well, for the longest time, I've been wanting to share how my book, Butterfly Kisses, uh, the Grandma and Grandpa, came about and um, show you the very first mess of a book and then finally do a reading of the final book. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I think it might be helpful to some authors and illustrators and also um, because over these over the years we found that the book is a great grandparents day book um, grandmothers love the book long-distance grandmothers love the book so um, some long-distance grandfathers too so um, anyway let's move on I thought it might be fun um, or nice if I shared my story, the story that, my personal story that inspired Butterfly Kisses. And I'm going to kind of be reading it, just so you know. Guests mingled. Their conversations competed with a lively version of White Christmas until our daughter Jennifer turned down the stereo and shouted, Everybody gather round! Her husband, Kurt, stoked the fire while she and the guests assembled around their Christmas card perfect tree. We have special party favors for you, Jennifer announced, but you have to open them all at the same time. We waited curiously. One by one, she pulled red satin boxes from a velvet Santa bag and handed them to her guests. I imagine the boxes held Christmas ornaments and thought, I haven't seen her this excited on Christmas since she was ten years old. These must be exceptional ornaments. My mind snapped back when Jennifer started the countdown. One, two, three, go! As instructed, we all opened our gifts at the same time. I removed the tassel closure, raised the box top, and looked inside for my ornament. In its place was a mound of sparkling artificial snow. And... A note that read, Merry Christmas, you're going to be a grandmother. An emotional tidal wave rushed through me. This was one of the happiest days of my life, but also one of the saddest. After sharing weepy hugs and kisses, I looked around, wondering where my husband Steve had gone. There he was, standing at the front door, watching fluffy snowflakes floating to the carpet of snow below. The jubilation that filled the other room faded as my, I put my arms around him. In the silence of our moment, we stood together, watching the flakes dance through the air. And we cried. Partly from joy and partly because we knew this would be the last snow we would see for a while. However... There was something much larger tugging at our hearts. In three weeks, Steve would be starting a job 800 miles away. We were leaving Illinois and moving to North Carolina. My mind went crazy with thoughts of the future. My baby is having a baby and I won't be here to support her. I'll miss her stages of pregnancy. I won't be here for the birth. My grandchild won't know me. I'm going to miss everything. Our granddaughter is the third generation long distance grandchild. I know from experience that having remote grandparents can sometimes offer children the opportunity for travel adventures, but it can also create a sense of missed opportunities for all involved. My husband and I experienced one of those missed opportunities in August 2005. We sat on our porch, listening to rain tapping on the tree, in cadence with a happy chorus of frogs singing an enthusiastic yet tranquil tune. Steve heard the phone ringing in the distance and ran to answer. It was Kurt. He said, Jen's in labor, then continued for a short time with details before he rushed back to the birthing room. A surge of excitement, happiness, and sadness mixed through me. I sat on the porch sobbing and listening to the rain, music, and frogs. 
Journeys in, la journeys in labor, and here we sit, separated by all these miles. What if she needs me? I worried. A few hours later, the phone rang again. A deliriously excited Kurt announced, She's here! Jen and Baby are both doing well. Um, I lost my... I thought, my only child and my only grandchild, and they're 800 miles away. Those relentless tears showed up again, but with them came laughter, because this time my tears were the byproduct of pure joy. It poured over me like the rain gently poured over the trees. What a wonderful time for Jennifer and Kurt. What a wonderful time for Steve and me. And what a wonderful time for the world. Three weeks later, I finally saw my little Elle, the heart of my heart. I held her and kissed her for the very first time. She was a perfect extension of my other precious love, Jenny. With Elle, I found a more powerful bond than I had ever imagined. I never wanted to let her go. Nevertheless, I had to. North Carolina was waiting. I already missed her before I even boarded the plane. I missed feeling her in my arms her little head on my chest, and her smell. I missed watching her sleep and that cute little smile that I insisted had nothing to do with gas. Undoubtedly, it was because she loved being near Grandma. I longed to kiss her precious little face, hold her tiny hands and feet. I missed everything about perfectly sweet little Elle. To the hum of the airplane engines, my daydreams of Elle stirred up memories of my own experience as a long-distance grandchild. I reminisced about helping Grandma gather eggs and feed the chickens. Here, chick, 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 Grandma sang as she sprinkled chicken feed on the ground. I followed behind, throwing feed and singing, here, chick, 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 chick. Later, I watched Grandpa milking cows in the barn. The earthy smell of damp hay and cow pies soothed my nostrils. Suddenly, Grandpa looked up at me with a big grin. I felt something warm and wet hit my face. Grandpa giggled. He squirted me again with the cow's milk and laughed even louder. At the time, I didn't think it was very funny, but I have never forgotten that day or Grandpa's smile and laughter. Visiting Minnesota allowed me to experience the love of my long-distance grandparents, but it also opened my heart to country living. I remember swimming in the river, uh, going out on the lakes and fishing. I remember the wonder of nature, winding dirt roads, country freedom, and the many moments when the city was the farthest thing from my mind. My heart was there, and for a few weeks each summer, my home was there. I became present when I heard the airplane engine shift for a landing. My eyes fell upon the most glorious sunset I have ever seen. Looking out over the wing at the spectacular sky, I had a revelation. Not only will airplanes, cars, and telephones keep us connected, um, the universe, memories, and our hearts will keep us connected. We all have the sun, moon, and stars. I can teach Elle how nature can remind her of our love and fun times together. She will grow to love and treasure her long-distance grandparents and experience as I do mine. When Elle was old enough to go to Disney, we took a family vacation to Florida. One night, Elle and I stood on the beach and watched the sun paint the sky shades of pink, orange, and purple. After the big orange ball disappeared, we cuddled up on an old weathered beach swing, sang songs, and talked. Look, the moon, Elle pointed. The full moon peeked over the horizon. Good night, sun. Hello, Mr. Moon, Elle whispered, and then explained. Miss Sun went to bed. Now it's Mr. Moon's turn to go to work. We watched the moon make its way across the stars and up to the heavens, while its silver reflection bounced on the water. Gently swinging back and forth, 
and quietly listened to the waves until L drifted off to sleep. Our hearts linked the first time I held L in my arms, and 800 miles means nothing when we have nature, our imagination, memories, and lots of love to keep us connected. Every chance I get, I watch the sun go down, and I whisper, Good night, sun. Good night, L. I wait for Mr. Moon to appear over the treetops and imagine him shining through L's bedroom window. While Jenny tucks her in and gives her a special butterfly kiss from Grandma and Grandpa. My sadness and joy of being a remote grandparent is what inspired butterfly kisses for Grandma and Grandpa. For Elle's third birthday, I made a poorly illustrated homemade um, book called Close to You, which was the very first version of Butterfly Kisses for Grandma and Grandpa, and I'm going to share that in um, that homemade book in my next video. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my story. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe it even inspired you in some way. Um, stay tuned and I will be back with uh, more videos showing you the original version and uh, talking a little bit about what I learned as an author and an illustrator. Um, and then we'll show you the final version in a, in a third uh, video.